who are the faceless men? It depends on who is asking. To a penitent, they may be relief. To a victim, they may be vengeance. To a lord, they may be an incredible expense. And to the Iron Bank, they may be just another asset. What is up, everybody? Jeremy Ice and Fire here, and welcome back to another Song of Ice and Fire history and lore video. If you're enjoying the content, don't forget to slap a like, leave a comment down below, and subscribe and hit that bell for notifications so you don't miss any of our future content. The Faceless Men of Bravos have long been one of the most interesting and mysterious groups in all of A Song of Ice and Fire. But just where exactly did George get the inspiration behind this fabled order of assassins? Find out here as we trace the legendary Faceless Men all the way back to the world's very first order of assassins that dates all the way back to the 11th century, the Hashishin, and their founder, the Old Man of the Mountain. The Faceless Men are a group of religious assassins who worship the many-faced god, the god of death. They are located in the free city of Bravos, and their headquarters is a place called the House of Black and White where they train new recruits and carry out assignments, among many other things. The origins of the Faceless Men can reportedly be traced all the way back to the mines of Old Valyria, which brings us to the story of the very first of the Faceless Men. The story goes that this man heard the prayers of multiple different slaves and various different gods, and came to conclude that they were all praying to the same god with many different faces, hence the many-faced god. Believing that he was God's instrument, this would lead the first faceless man to give what would become known as the first gift to the most desperate of slaves in the mines of Valyria. Later on, it is also said that this first faceless man would go on to give the gift to the Valyrian masters as well, and some believe that this faceless man was the true source of the doom of Valyria. A big source of Valyria's power were their mines, which were located in the 14 flames of Valyria, a chain of active volcanoes along the peninsula. And many believe that this first faceless man assassinated many of the mages who were responsible for maintaining the flames under these volcanoes, causing them to erupt, which would bring on the doom of Valyria. From there, it is said that the first faceless man and his first few followers would go on to form the free city of Bravos, a place where slavery would never return. So what exactly was George's inspiration behind this incredibly mysterious order? Find out next as we dive into the very first order of assassins, the Hashishin and its founder, the Old Man of the Mountain. The Order of Assassins, also known as the Hashishin, and their founder, the Old Man of the Mountain, also known as Asan e Sabah, can trace their origins all the way back to the year 1050. At the age of 17, Hassan converted and swore allegiance to the Fatimid Caliph in Cairo. Legend says that he spent about two years traveling to Cairo and would visit many regions along the way, learning from many different faiths and masters. It's unclear exactly how much time he spent in Egypt, although most say it is around three years where he continued his studies as a missionary, learning the martial arts along the way as well. While studying in Cairo, he seemed to earn the ire of their chief of army, Badir al-Jamali, which led to Hassan being in prison for a short period of time. But when the prison mysteriously collapsed, it was taken to be an omen in favor of Hassan, and he was promptly released and deported. From there, Hassan was set to return to Persia when the ship that he was traveling on shipwrecked, but he was eventually rescued and taken to Syria. From there, he would eventually make his way back to Persia, where he would become incredibly devoted to his teachings, going as far as the Caspian Sea and the mountains of Alborz. Which brings us to the capture of Alamut. Hassan was in search for a base from which he could guide his mission, in which he eventually found in the year 1088, in the castle of Alamut. Hassan's takeover of the fort would be conducted without any significant bloodshed. To the effect, this transition, Hassan employed a patient and deliberate strategy, one which took the better part of two years to take effect. 
But after successfully capturing the fort, Hassan now had a base for which he could continue teaching his doctrine. From there, he would go on to establish the world's very first order of Nazari assassins, also known as the Hashashin. From there, Hassan, or the Old Man of the Mountain, would go on to spread his doctrine, creating a master class of assassins who would go on to take part in many different world conflicts and political assassinations. A Nazari assassin is identified as a Fidali, or devotee, who offers his life for others or in service of a particular cause. George would then take this historical group put his own fantasy twist on it, and the Faceless Men were officially born. And there are a ton of parallels between the two orders and the two orders' founders. I very much think that the Old Man of the Mountains is very much akin to the first Faceless Men in George's tale. Two orders of master assassins who are both extremely skilled in the art of death and deceit whom both consider their doctrines extremely spiritual and religious. But that is going to do it for us today on this A Song of Ice and Fire history and lore video. I want to thank everybody out there for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this breakdown of George R. R. Martin's inspiration behind the Faceless Men of Bravos and the Hashashin and the infamous Old Man of the Mountains. Don't forget to slap that like on your way out, drop a comment, and subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications so you can stay up to date on all of our future content, and we will see you on the next one. Mm -hmm.